Okay, on this next section, we're going to look at what we can do when we have a non homogeneous linear ODE with constant coefficients. So non homogeneous. Non homogeneous means that we have this not equal to zero, but equal to some function of x. So we're still going to look at constant coefficients. And when we solve this, we're going to find the complementary solution, which is the solution to our homogeneous ODE, just like we've been doing, set it equal to zero and solve. And then we're going to look for what's called a particular solution. And the particular solution is one that's going to solve this entire equation. And there, there are a couple of different ways that we're going to find that particular solution. First, we're going to use a method called undetermined coefficients. Once we do find it, our general solution is going to be a combination of the complementary solution and the particular solution. So let's look at what our particular solu solutions may look like. What we want to do is find a, a suitable particular solution. Uh, we're going to use a method called undetermined coefficients. And uh, the undetermined coefficients means that we're going to know the forms of the terms, but we're not going to know what the actual coefficient is. So we're going to use letters to represent those. When we make a guess for our particular solution, that particular solution has to contain contain uh, the form of the solution form of and we're looking at this g of x that we're going to have as a function all by itself on the right side of the equation so we want the form of any terms of g of x and der th their derivatives For example, here I have, if my g of x is e to the x power, then any derivative of e to the x is also e to the x. So my yp would be a times e to the x. But here, if my g of x is x, then I know that, that if g is equal to x, then g prime is 1 and then g double prime is 0, so that, that drops out. But forms of the derivative of x would be anything like 1. So my particular solution in this case, I would multiply some constant, I'm using capital letters here for undetermined coefficients, times x plus another constant times 1 or just ax plus b. And then if I did c times 0, that would drop out. So this one is just ax plus b. And in general, whenever you have a polynomial, you want to include that polynomial that you initially have. So this is ax to the third. And then the derivative of an x to the third term would be an x squared term. So I have bx squared. I can take the derivative of x squared to get an x term. Derivative of x would give me a constant term. So ax to the third plus bx squared plus cx plus d includes all the forms of the derivative of x to the third. Now notice that when you do the derivative of three x of x to the third, the first derivative this would be g prime, would be 3x squared. I don't need to include the 3 because I'm only looking at the form of that answer, x squared. And this uh, b that I have here would incorporate that 3. 
The same thing here if you have e to the negative 2x. When you take the derivative, that negative 2 is going to come down, and that will be part of the coefficient. So if I just had e to the negative 2x, I would have yp is equal to a, I'm going to leave a little space here, e to the negative 2x. And my derivative of e to the negative 2x will always give me another e to the negative 2x coming out. So this would be all that I have. But because I have an x to the third here, then I have to take into account what types of terms do I get by by taking the derivative and here using the product rule. Taking the derivative of x to the third is going to give me an x squared and that will still be multiplied by the exponential and and so forth. So because I have this x to the third, I'm going to have an x to the third e to the negative 2x. I'm going to have an x squared e to the negative 2x. I'm going to have an x e to the negative 2x. And I'm going to have just an e to the negative 2x. So all of these terms will make up my particular solution. Each term should have a different coefficient. Okay, how about sine of 3x? When you take the derivative of sine 3x, you get, you bring out the 3, but that's just a coefficient, and that'll be taken care of by this coefficient, by, uh, by b for our second term. The derivative of sine is cosine of the same angle. So here I get a sine 3x plus b cosine 3x. Here, if you have x squared sine x, again, you're going to have to use that product rule, and the derivative of x squared will give you an, an x, derivative of x will give you a constant. Each one of those will be multiplied by sine, and derivative of sine is cosine. So we're going to have a x squared sine x plus b x sine x plus c sine x and then for my cosine terms I'll have a dx squared cosine x ex cosine x and f cosine x. So you can see some of these particular solutions can get really long. Once you identify what the particular solution is, you'll substitute it into the original ODE and then we'll have to solve for all of these unknowns for the A, B, C, D, E, F, and so forth. If your uh, g of x is a sum or difference of two different terms, then your particular solution has to contain all forms of each term and the derivative of that term. So here, yp has to contain all forms of x to the third and its derivatives. That's what we did up here. So it's going to be ax to the third plus bx squared plus cx plus d and then I need all forms of the derivative of x e to the x and I'm going to write that as ax plus b e to the x so I have ax e to the x whoops, and b e to the x oh, I just made a mistake there let me see if I can fix it. Because I can't repeat the same... Oh, I can't. I can't repeat the same, same letter. Okay, so I have A, B, C, D. This should be an E. 
and this should be an F. The same letters cannot be repeated. Okay, uh, e to the negative x cosine x. When you take derivative of e to the x, you're always going to get e to the x. Same thing with e to the negative x. So I'll just pull that out. And what we're really looking at is derivatives of cosine 2x. That's going to give me an a cosine 2x. And the derivative is going to be a sine 2x, b sine 2x. Now on this one, I think I'll factor out the e to the x first and write this as sine x minus 3 cosine x. So my particular solution has to be e to the x. I have to have an a sine x and the derivative of this sine x is cosine x plus b cosine x and the derivative of this cosine gets me back to sine so this is my particular solution and on this last one we have four different terms Let's see where my mouse is there it is So 5 is a constant. It's going to give me a constant and derivative of a constant is 0. Here I have a sine x. If I have a sine x, then the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So I need both sine and cosine. Here I have an exponential and derivative of the exponential is the exponential. And on this last term, cosine 2x, uh, so I have a cosine 2x. Notice that's not the same as cosine x. And if you do the derivative of cosine of 2x, you're going to get sine of 2x. Okay, there is a table in your book that uh, that you can use to to uh, help you determine the form of the particular function that you want to use when you're using this method of undetermined coefficients. Uh, you, but really what you want to do is you want to make sure that you include all of the forms of whatever g of x is and then think what kind of terms can the derivative have and list all of those forms.